I have the iPad OS 26 installed on my iPad mini and dare I say it's about to replace my Xiaomi Pad 7 because of one thing, the new window management system. With a later software update from Apple, my iPad mini is now a MacBook in the most essential ways. I'm not saying using the iPad mini with a small screen size is the best way to experience iPad OS 26, but for the sake of this video, I just wanted to share how the new Windows management works as well as some of the early quirks you need to deal with. There are three ways to manage Windows with a new update. In settings, under multitasking and gestures, you can choose one of the three ways to multitask. Right off the bat, we're talking about window apps. In this mode, depending on the last state of the app, it's going to open apps in either full screen or windowed mode. By default, apps will open in full screen mode. To switch to window mode, you can hold and drag this curved icon to any size you want. To go back to full screen, you drag the icon back to the corner or tap the three dots on the top right corner and choose the green icon to go full screen. If you can find the three dots in full screen mode, you need to swipe down from the top to reveal them including the menu bar. Similar to macOS, you have the most common app customizations here. Assuming you don't have a keyboard connected to your iPad, I recommend using the menu bar to explore actions. I don't use the menu bar a lot to be honest with you, but for those who rely on it, there's no option to keep the menu bar permanent, meaning you have to swipe down from time to time. Given we're looking at a beta version, this could change in the near future. The iPad mini 7 that I have here comes with 8GB of RAM. I'm not sure what kind of memory management Apple has done here, but I'm blown away by the fact that I'm able to have 12 apps simultaneously open with two of them actively running games. Sure, it bugs down the system a bit, but let's say you're playing and multitasking for some reason, you don't have to worry about apps closing in the background, which is one of the limitations of Android tablets right now. With the Pad 7, I'm limited to 4 active apps only. Sure, you probably don't need more than 4 apps running at the same time, but it sure is impressive to see that on a tablet. A tablet. When holding and dragging from the bottom, you can have your windowed apps view in a group. However, you also have the option to have the windows close whenever you swipe up. There are several home and in-app gestures as well for redo, undo, copying and pasting, and switching apps, which is similar to how I also use the trackpad on my Mac. You also have the option to hide or show the dock. Lastly, if you put apps side by side, you have the small bar that connects them, which allows you to resize the connected apps at the same time. That's it for windowed apps. If you noticed, I have this case for the iPad mini that's also a stand in many ways. This is the Moth Dynamic Folio and it's kind of wild how it manages to be everything I need in just one case. It's a magnetic folio so it snaps on easily and it doesn't just protect the iPad, it adapts to how I use it. Whether I'm watching videos, reading articles, or doom scrolling, this folds into the exact angle I need without me even thinking about it. And unlike other bulky stands, this one keeps things slim, like iPad mini levels of slim. There are four main ways to use this case, but there are over 20 angles to discover the perfect match for every use. Honestly, if you use your iPad for different things throughout the day, this is one of those rare all-in-one cases that actually nails every use case. Yup, it even has an optional magnetic pen holder. Check it out through the link in the description because it's so affordable for what it is. The second mode is Stage Manager. While this feature isn't new, it's also another way to use windowed apps. In this case, you have your recent apps on the left panel. Apple says this is best used for those wanting to couple apps into groups and is best for organizing multiple apps. You still have the same benefits as windowed apps, it's just that you have Stage Manager on the left side whenever you use apps in Windows. However, it also means that when you swipe to go home, you need to open an app to see that Stage Manager. Lastly, you have full screen apps which is basically the old ways of previous iPad OS versions. You lose all the new features such as windowed apps and the menu bar, but you do have left and right corner swipe actions for taking a screenshot or a quick note. Pair your iPad with a mouse and keyboard, and you have arguably a MacBook alternative. With a mouse, it makes things easier to navigate thanks to the switch from a circle to an actual pointer. It's also faster to access the menu bar and the dock as you only need to drag the pointer. But since this is better access we're running on, the mouse experience is usable at best. 
I get this flickering screen consistently and moving the pointer doesn't feel natural for some reason. For someone who is used to working on a desktop and a laptop, the only challenge for me when working on an iPad is the display size, particularly the scaling. Even when you have the iPad mini extended to an external monitor, it'll only mirror the display. So what you see on the iPad is basically just an upscaled version on a monitor. You can play with the text and display size in the settings, but even then, what you're seeing is still not enough to make multitasking a productive experience, at least here on the iPad mini. I do have an iPad Pro with a larger screen, but that's for another video. To spoil you a bit, I think more people will want a bigger iPad display now simply because it can do multiple windows a la Mac. Apple didn't need to bring the new Windows experience to the mini, but it's definitely a welcome upgrade. That's it for this one, drop us a bar like if you like supporting the channel, and as always, until the next one, stay safe.